my background in pharmaceuticals, I think undoubtedly one of the greatest challenges is being able to understand the dynamics of interaction of the complex networks that underpin not just normal function, but how that function goes wrong in disease. So those are challenges, understanding the physiology, understanding how the physiology is going wrong, understanding how we can represent that in models and ask questions that we can't do in clinical trials and create testable hypotheses from lots and lots of data, processing big data, understanding how you can create actionable information from that big data is absolutely key. And at the moment, without the use of computational approaches such as modeling and simulation, that's a huge challenge. In silico clinical trials is, I guess, a bit of a misnomer. It's what we had in the Avicenna project. The first thing I should say, it's not just about using modeling and simulation to focus on the clinical trial itself, but actually it's a recognition that there are many decision points, many activities that, uh, that are part of the workflow that is used in order to get to a clinical trial. So, if we look at rare diseases, if we look at pediatric indications, if we look at areas where patient populations are relatively small, you're unlikely to get uh, statistical significance from small cohorts. So the question is, how do you actually run a clinical trial to ask the questions that you need to in those particular instances? The answer is that if you can run a, a, a computer simulation of virtual populations in a clinical trial, using appropriate software. They can generate hypotheses that are testable in a small population uh, where you can reach statistical significance, hopefully because you've actually run the experiment beforehand. And that can have a massive impact, not just on the kind of trial that you design, because it can only be small, but on the reduction and refinement of animal uh, experimentation. The prioritization of very expensive, large-scale uh, laboratory experiments. So it can have an impact on cost reduction by streamlining the workflow because you've done stuff in a computer before you actually spend money at the bench. I think that the role of software vendors uh, and producers such as ANSYS is, is critical in making sure that what you deliver, firstly it does what it says on the tin, uh, secondly that it's validated and can deliver genuine output that is relevant to the clinic. And thirdly, that the software is easy to use by people who don't need to spend time being trained. And again, if you're looking at the clinical side, um, that's gonna be important for the training of the physicians being able to use it, or the surgeons. Uh, you don't need to re you know, recruit specialist individuals. So I think really high quality, tailored software that understands those things and is able to deliver quality uh, packages is going to be critical and clearly ANSYS is in, in the leading position to do that.